Okay, so here we are again with the gates. It's been approximately two years since these were constructed last. The gate over here hasn't sagged hardly at all. Uh, we're about to put a bracer on there, as you can just notice with that uh, G-clamp holding the bracer in its temporary position. It'll stay there, we'll probably, put, probably be putting a bolt through the uh, middle section and uh, screws in the top and the bottom. This gate here has already got its bracer in place and uh, without it, it was sagging down slightly but we basically raised it up off the ground with some wood. Right here we put this bracer in and it swings freely. Open and close, open and close. This one used to have the tin, well, the, the aluminium green metal sheet on the outside. However, even I had to admit it was kind of look, making the place look like a post-apocalyptic uh, flipping gang hideout rather than uh, something worthy of uh, medieval spec uh, wood timber frames. So, in the earlier video, or one of my video, other videos, you'll probably have seen uh, Martin Man Mike go at it like a madman removing the uh, sheeting. However, when we did this, this caused the gate to sag and now it's actually uh, in the dirt slightly. So what I'll probably be doing is I'll be lifting this up and then it'll be moving freely. But the main reason I'll be lifting it up is because I'll be putting another bracer from here all the way up to here and that'll hopefully uh, get this looking as it should. If you look at it right now you'll probably notice this gate here is higher than this one. Okay and now the uh, first bracer, diagonal bracer, is in position. This was a bit of a pain in the ass to do because when you met, as I learnt as I went through this by trial and error, when you actually make your measurements for uh, your angles, cutting, you, cutting your 45 degree, degree angles, you've got to make sure you brace this fully up so that it's level. What I did was I didn't brace it up so it was level correctly. I made my cuts and then when I realised it wasn't quite level I raised up a bit more and uh, lo and behold my um, distances weren't perfect. You know it's a bit short here and uh, it's slightly short here. But that was no problem because what I did was I had a handy little friend here with this uh, central uh, horizontal and what I did was I drilled and put a lag, a lag screw all the way through both, both of these uh, logs and that basically pinned it in place allowing me to play around with getting the spikes through here and another spike up through here. It was easier though this time because I had a cordless drill to help me so I made a few pilot holes here, here and over there and uh, I got them in. Um, and then what I've done to finish it partially is I've wedged it so that will basically make up for the distance. What I'll probably do here and at the bottom end is I'll probably get some wood filler in there, I'll trim off these wedges and just wood filler it out so it basically disguises any ugly gaps uh, especially over here this is going to be a real nightmare to wood filler but I'll probably do it as best I can just little by little and as long as that just basically makes it look a bit more uh, less horrific all the better. I've got some more things to add to it, I've got to put some, probably put some board it out on the inside and do a few other things but that's the, the first uh, main gateway section done and there's one more to go over here. This is where the next bracer will be going, just in here. I've just peeled this log, uh, I'll probably have to get an angle grinder out and chop this uh, spike out because that's, uh, that's, that's looking maybe in the way and uh, I'll do my angles on the top and the bottom. This is the tool I was using to peel the logs. I've used this for about two and a half years now. I think uh, my buddy Mike, he got it at some garage sale decades ago and it's still working good. It's a bit blunt but it still uh, shaves the logs, peels the logs quite quite cleanly. When it's an old log, an old dead log that you haven't taken the bark off, it can be quite uh, stubborn but when it's fresh like this there's no problems. The only issue with it is it's uh, got no uh, grips here so you've got to use gloves when using it unless you like your hands getting messed up. And what you see here is the vertical post that's going to basically make up this gate frame here. Uh, you might notice, the, the keen-eyed folk among you might notice this is very uh, green wood. It's from a freshly harvested tree that fell, fell down over the uh, early spring, I estimate. 
and uh, I've peeled it which was very easy, it's very easy to peel a green tree that's recently uh, just fallen it's still alive you might say with all the sap and everything uh, unfortunately I might have to give it at least a week to season before I start going about nailing it to these more uh, rugged pieces of wood these rugged, more rugged logs because I'm fearful that maybe under the weight it might snap because it's green wood but um, that's the next stage almost uh, ready to start it's looking good now, I've got almost all the gates done it's just one, this section that's going to go on here that's, that's left and then I can get on with other projects at the hold okay, on, on, onwards and we okay okay, here we go on what I've found is uh, in areas of high snowpack gates like these, if they haven't been braced properly they'll uh, slightly sag down if the post is independent and hasn't got roots even with concrete in the ground it uh, had a tendency to shift but what I've done is I basically uh, realigned it to the vertical plane using uh, a power pull and rope that uh, has basically pulled it back to the vertical or what I think is nearest damn it the vertical I'll be checking this with a spirit level later and basically after this is done I can now then add bracing in from here to here if you look over here you've noticed there's probably a nail you should see a nail in the actual uh, tree somewhere in this vicinity right there you see it now that's where the level is with here approximately here I've got a little mark on the other side of this you can't see I've marked it as a cross and that's where the, the, the level is with the nail over here and hopefully what will happen is with the brace, with the, the log that I've got to cut is it'll brace this post from any sagging in the future making it pretty much snow, snow proof and that's the crossbar in place and uh, I've done about three quarters of it and Mike's just finishing it off giving it the final few turns uh, we had to use a manual auger to uh, make the hole because uh, that power drill, that power drill uh, is uh, out of action. Battery's flat; it can't take it. If I just zoom in right there, you can see where the bolts come clean through. I'll be fillering that with wood filler, so it's no more gap. Matt's probably going to take that all the way in if he can, so we get as much of the bolt through into the main cross piece. It's going about maybe three inches maybe four inches into the actual cross piece and uh, that should hold okay so the story so far I've got one gate frame left it's all been assembled made up bolt nailed spiked I should say hinges are on it I may add a third inner central uh, log so it's easier for when we uh, go to mount it on the hinges or should I say the hinge bolts I've mounted the lower hinge bolt level I've, lo I've mounted the lower hinge bolt level with this hinge bolt here but for the upper hinge bolt um, I've had to obviously go off I've had to obviously go off what the distance is between the two uh, main hinges so I measured what it was, I think it was 66 and 3 quarters of an inch and if you just see that little blue nail there it should be next to the uh, partially broken branch that's where I've basically got to get it lifted to uh, so for that I'm going to be probably getting some ladders out I was considering using breeze block, a breeze block platform but it's not very stable and I probably end up either tumbling down into that creek uh, or into uh, maybe into a softer landing here or I might end up over there so I'll probably be going for a uh, set of ladders instead for uh, at least for mounting the actual uh, uh, screw bolt because these screw bolts they are a hard hard toil to actually screw in and doing that at height is going to be risky anyway so I'll uh, 
see how it goes and uh, let you know how I get on. Well, after a hard day's toil and uh, much adjustments, uh, testing and refitting, we finally got the, uh, the great gates of the hold completed, or nearly completed, because the sharp-eyed among you will have noticed there's no diagonal bracer right now, and my precision eye let me down slightly, because although the top one's nice and uh, flush, the bottom one needs to uh, come down slightly with bringing that end up slightly and even so I might still be out by about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch and I may have to try and get some washers split them with an angle grinder and just slot them in and uh, something like that but for the most part we got them mounted how we did it we tried two of us doing it and I don't know if you can appreciate how low the ground is here but you know we had to lift just getting up to the bottom hinge was hard enough but look how high that top hinge is so in the end, after the first effort was just too darn dangerous and we were, we were going left and right like a flipping comedy movie, stopping, stopping the post from ripping out the hinges and going down into the creek. Um, so what we did was, uh, I got, Mike suggested it, and I basically got a bowline on there, went up around the two biggest branches and back down again, and that held the top end up so it wasn't going to fall down on anyone. And by, as if by providence, we had some cabin neighbours come along, and one of them, he's built like a, he's built like a stack of haystacks, and he, uh, he helped lift it. So now the gates are uh, almost complete, and uh, it's looking good so far. Sometimes you just gotta cheat. To save me having to mess around cutting washers, slipping them around, re-welding them, I'm basically going to use the brute force and ignorance method of getting a G-clamp on there and basically making enough turns to uh, squeeze them together. Now, it's a bit naughty doing this because you should really let it settle itself, but because it's uh, not braced yet anyway, uh, once I put the bracing on, I'll probably uh, remove this. But I'm going to give this a few more turns. I'd show you doing this on camera, but I need, I need two hands, otherwise it keeps wanting to slip off. Well, these are the completed gates. Hung, braced. They need a few more finishing touches on the bottom pieces for the uh, cladding, and in the middle and the top. But as you can see by the, the size of my friend here, he's six foot tall. So that should tell you how tall these gates are overall. We measured him as nearly 10 foot. These are nearly 10 foot gates from the top to the bottom, right to the dirt. And uh, the well I'm impressed, they're well balanced. They, they always want to return to the closed position. Maybe they're trying to tell us something. That left hand gate there, it always wants to return to the closed position. But. Um, for now, yeah, I'm happy with it. The gates are complete. I can now move on to other projects, namely uh, some land development and uh, cabin construction up on the Golden Hill.